DBHDD is reminding people that the Georgia Crisis and Access Line can help those worried about opioid and stimulant misuse. The toll-free number is online and is active 24-7. More information at opioidresponse.info. Welcome to the Georgia Today podcast from GPB News. Today is Tuesday, June 18th. I'm Peter Biello. On today's episode, help is on the way for businesses affected by Atlanta's recent water main breaks. Georgia is conducting research to improve problems at its troubled prison system. And a Marietta native is named the NBA Finals Most Valuable Player. These stories and more are coming up on this edition of Georgia Today. Voting is underway in primary election runoffs in Georgia. GPB's Sarah Callis has the latest. Voters living in the heavily Republican 3rd Congressional District in West Georgia are choosing between former state Senate Majority Leader Mike Dugan and former Trump advisor Brian Jack. The winner will face off against Democrat Maura Keller in November. Dan Scarborough voted in the runoff in Villa Rica. The economy is uh, bothersome and affects everybody that I know. And the border, I'm not too keen on the border being open since we can't visit other countries without permission. No one should be able to visit ours. Polls are open until 7 p.m. tonight. The 14th and 2nd Congressional Districts are also holding runoffs. For GPB News, I'm Sarah Callis in Carroll County. Help is on the way for small businesses impacted by water outages several weeks ago in Atlanta. The city's council yesterday approved a financial relief fund after a series of water main breaks left homes and businesses under boil water advisories for several days. GPB's Amanda Andrews has more. The Atlanta Recovery Fund will offer $7.5 million in relief money for businesses through Invest Atlanta. Funding will supplement lost revenue and compensate employees. Eligible businesses include those in the boil water advisory area, with priority on industries directly impacted, like restaurants, salons, and daycares. Councilmember Antonio Lewis says residents in his district say they'll need financial support as well after the water crisis. I know we need to wait one month to see how bills were affected. But I want to see the mayor put together the same type of legislation, piece of legislation uh, that would take care of people in the city of Atlanta. Businesses will have from June 24th to July 8th to apply for relief funds. For GPB News, I'm Amanda Andrews. South Korean automaker Hyundai today announced which vehicle model will be the first to roll off the assembly line at its $7 billion electric car and battery plant currently under construction in Bryan County outside Savannah. GPB's Benjamin Payne reports. Auto workers at Hyundai's so-called Meta plant will christen the new EV factory with the Ionic 5 crossover, expected to begin production sometime between October and December of this year. The Ionic 5 is Hyundai's best-selling electric vehicle, and eventually the Meta plant will be the company's only facility manufacturing it for the U.S. market. Joe LaMorelia is head of communications for the Hyundai Meta plant. We are doing test production at the moment. Actually, on Thursday, a bunch of vehicles will be going down the final line. So it's all about training. We call our employees MetaPros. All of our MetaPros that are hourly workers that will be working on the line have been training for months, being paid to train, and now they're getting into the factory and actually getting to do what they were trained to do. And that's really exciting. Hyundai says the EV factory in Bryan County will create 8,500 direct jobs. For GPB News, I'm Benjamin Payne in Savannah. A Georgia man has been released from prison a decade after his toddler died in a hot car, a case that made global headlines after prosecutors accused him of murder. Prison and jail records show Justin Ross Harris was released on Sunday from a prison in middle Georgia's Macon County and transferred the same day to a jail in metro Atlanta's Cobb County. He began serving his sentence in 2016. The Georgia Supreme Court overturned his murder conviction in 2022, but he continues serving time for other crimes. Atlanta Public Schools have selected a business executive and former school superintendent from Tennessee to lead the city school system. Brian Johnson was named as the sole finalist for the position today, about a year after the school district's last permanent leader left when her contract wasn't renewed. Johnson led Chattanooga's Hamilton County School District for four years ending in 2021 when he became an executive with trucking company U.S. Express Enterprises. He currently serves as an administrator at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Interim Superintendent Dr. Danielle Battle will transition from her role by the end of August, following the Board of Education vote on July 8th.
Georgia is launching an in-depth assessment of its troubled prison system to identify steps needed to improve safety. Governor Brian Kemp announced the move late yesterday, a day after a food service worker was shot and killed at a state prison in southeast Georgia. The state also faces a federal probe into its understaffed and violent prison system. The assessment by a Chicago-based consulting firm is expected to cost between 2 and $3 million. Emory Healthcare is setting aside more than $100 million for employee raises. The healthcare system told GPB late yesterday the pay hikes will affect 17,000 of its 25,000 workers. The raises are being phased in over a six-month period that began in March. They do not include pay hikes for physicians or physician assistants, but rather the system's, quote, patient-facing workforce, including nursing teams, therapists, technologists, food workers, and others. The nation's largest privately owned company, global food processor Cargill, plans to open a new office hub in Atlanta. The Minnesota-based company said today the move is expected to create more than 400 jobs. Cargill's digital and technology division will be the initial tenant at the hub's location within the city of Atlanta. The exact site was not disclosed, but it comes as technology giants including Google, Microsoft, and Apple open offices in Atlanta, spurring tech jobs, especially near Georgia Tech and Midtown Atlanta. In sports, Marietta native Celtics shooting guard Jalen Brown is the NBA Finals' most valuable player. The Wheeler High School graduate helped the Boston Celtics beat the Dallas Mavericks 106-88 in the NBA Finals last night, winning their 18th title, making them the franchise with the most championships in league history. Brown finished the night with 21 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. And the Braves face the Detroit Tigers at home again tonight. Spencer Schwellenbach is scheduled to get the start for the A. Last night, the Braves and Tigers held each other scoreless for more than half the game. Gainesville, Georgia native Reese Olsen pitched six scoreless innings for the Tigers. And with the game tied 1-1, Ozzie Albies homered to give the Braves the lead. Final score, Braves 2, Tigers 1. Jesse Chavez pitched five outs of scoreless relief for the Braves. He says the Braves are successful because, win or lose, the team's effort is consistent. Just keep showing up every single day, knowing what you got to get accomplished, because we're all professionals, and we all know what we got to do, and that's the biggest thing. Show up every day, get ready for tomorrow, and let's see what happens. With his brief outing, Chavez lowered his opponent's batting average with runners in scoring position to a major league best .059. He's also allowed only one of his 13 inherited runners to score this season, which is second best in the National League. And that is it for this edition of Georgia Today. If you want to learn more about any of these stories, visit gpb.org news. And if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, take a moment, do it now. It'll keep us current in your podcast feed. And if you have feedback or a story idea for us, let us know by email. The address is georgiatoday at gpb.org. I'm Peter Biello. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.